Sanger Moses from Uganda there speaking to me at the TED conference of big thinkers in California earlier this year. He's working to make fuels from agricultural waste, but agriculture itself is suffering in East Africa and actually throughout sub-Saharan Africa. The population has doubled since 1970, and as it grows, farmland is diminished. The end result is too many people trying to grow crops on not enough land. So fewer farmers are practicing crop rotation, where land is left fallow or unfarmed each season to rejuvenate. Instead, there's more of growing the same crop year after year, which eventually depletes nutrients in the soil and leads to lower yields. But a new farming practice is starting to spread around the continent, and it could lead to a new phenomenon known as the Great Green Wall of Africa, as our reporter Mira Senthalingam has been finding out. In small rural towns of sub-Saharan Africa, food security depends on local food production. Residents are often smallhold farmers specialising in one particular crop, and for them, small changes in yield can have severe consequences. In recent years, a new farming practice has been hoping to improve soil conditions and nutrition in the often degraded land of these single-crop farms. And it's doing this by planting trees, evergreen trees, to enable evergreen agriculture. Evergreen agriculture is a system of farming that integrates trees with annual crops so that uh, we can be able to save on water and at the same time increase the productivity of the crops. Jonathan Muriukri from the World Agroforestry Centre. Eventually now we are agreeing that the climate is changing and therefore farmers are getting less harvest. There has been a lot of land degradation because of the conventional agricultural practices. So we need something that is sustainable that can work for us even as farm sizes decrease. This is called Tephrosia fogeli. It is one species that uh, it is semi-annual, so it, can, it gets to its maturity in about one year. But the goodness with it, it is it can quickly shed its foliage and recover a place that was degraded so quickly in fertility. It is also a nitrogen fixer, so we are using this one as one of the very first species that you plant into a land that was completely degraded. The aim is to use trees such as the acacia variety Fiderbia albida planted amongst crops to provide nutrients through leaf litter and nitrogen fixation, suppress plant pests, improve soil structure and provide direct production of food, fodder and fuel. But the key to a healthy crop is a healthy soil. Uh, And the real key is to know a region's soil structure, as Tor Vargin from the World Agroforestry Centre showed me on a walk through the Karura Forest in Nairobi. So in in Africa in general, one of the key nutrients in terms of deficiency is often phosphorus. So that would be a key key nutrient to know something about. Another one would be nitrogen, for example. Uh, Or the organic sort of matter content of the soil in general, as that also tells us quite a lot about the nutrient sort of status of the soil. Digging these soils to sample them can offer a wealth of information. This topsoil here is... um it's actually nice. It's, it's, you can see quite a lot of, of small aggregates in here. From the look of it, it seems to have a, a pretty good you know, organic matter content as well. And so this is the composition, say, in a forest, but what would you expect to find in, say, heavily cultivated land? In cases where we have cultivation on, where there's been conversion, for example, from forest, we often see quite a lot of, of physical degradation in that soil, quite a bit of compaction due to the properties of the soil. So you often have the whole structure of the soil collapsing and uh, it can be quite heavily eroded as well. One way the concept of evergreen agriculture is being taken further is by planning an initiative for its use across sub-Saharan Africa, quite literally in the form of a Great Green Wall. Well, the Great Green Wall, it's based on the idea that the Sahara Desert is advancing southward. Dennis Garrity, director of the World Agroforestry Centre. The plan actually is to develop the Great Green Wall from the uh, Atlantic Ocean uh, in Senegal all the way across the continent to Djibouti on the Indian Ocean. And that wall would be the basis for uh, stopping, supposedly, the advance of the desert. Here is a picture of what the Sahelian landscape will look like. Because it's a very, it's a much greener image, I guess, than expected. Exactly, because what you see here is a dense forest of trees, but that forest is not growing outside of the farms, it's growing in the farms, right where they're growing their crops of millet and sorghum. 
So the millet and sorghum are growing in the forest, what we call an agroforest. Although this may not solve the problem of food security, practices such as evergreen agriculture, unlike fertiliser use, are enabling more affordable, sustainable and accessible farming methods, resulting in benefits to both farmers and the environment. Mira Senthalingam reporting on that new concept in farming in Africa, ending this week's Science in Action, which was produced by Anja Liktorovic. There are links to that project and also the work that Sanga Moses is doing on eco-friendly fuels in Uganda. They're up on our website. You can just look for Science in Action at bbcworldservice.com. There are dozens of different podcasts now available from the BBC, including news, documentaries, science, business, arts and sport. For details of them all, go to bbcworldservice.com slash podcasts.